Welcome back. Now for our top 10 plays on SportsCenter. Today we're looking at the uh, top 10 inventions of the 1800s. Should be a good one. I'm excited. Finger, why can't I listen to my music whenever I want? We have the records. There's nothing to put them on. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Isn't that just terrible? Well, did they know that the phonograph was soon to be invented? The phonograph was invented in 1877 by Thomas Edison. While other inventors had produced devices that could record sounds, Edison's phonograph was the first to be able to reproduce the recorded sound. Alexander Graham Bell's Volta Laboratory made several improvements in the 1880s, including the use of wax-coated cardboard cylinders and a cutting stylus that moved from side to side in a zigzag pattern across the record. Other improvements were made throughout the years, including modifications to the turntable and its drive system, the needle and stylus, and the sound and equalization systems. Well, that sounds like a pretty good invention to me. <laughs> and at number nine, vulcanized rubber. Poor Binger. He was unable to drive because he did not yet have vulcanized rubber. By the mid-1830s, it seemed as though the rubber industry in America was going under. Miraculously, the industry was saved by inventor Charles Goodyear, a man with no knowledge of chemistry who worked stubbornly and tenaciously to develop vulcanized rubber. After incidentally learning about rubber's fatal flaw, Charles Goodyear became determined to invent a way to make the substance more stable. When his experiments with rubber continually failed, Goodyear reduced his family to poverty, was jailed for debt, and derided by society as a madman. Undeterred, inventor Charles Goodyear finally found that, by uniformly heating sulfur and lead-fortified rubber, at a relatively low temperature, he could render the rubber melt-proof and reliable. He patented the process in 1844, licensed it to manufacturers, and was ultimately hailed as a genius. We really bounced back from that one. Now number eight, the sewing machine. Look at these poor unfortunate souls. Look at all the extra work they're doing. If only they had a machine for this. The first American lock-stitch st sewing machine was invented by Walter Hunt in 1832. His machine used an eye-point needle carrying the upper thread and a falling shuttle carrying the lower thread. The curved needle moved through the fabric horizontally, leaving the loop as it withdrew. The shuttle passed through the loop, interlocking the thread. The feed let the machine down, requiring the machine to be stopped and reset up. Elias Howe, born in Spencer, Massachusetts, created his sewing machine in 1845 using a similar method to Hunt's, except the fabric was held vertically. The major improvement he made was to have the needle running away from the point, starting from the eye. Wow, you really killed that joke. Just like our next invention, the Reaper. Yeah, we had, we had no idea how to act this one out. We're just going to cut to the footage. Why did I say cut the footage? <laughs> there is, this is the footage. What the hell does that mean? This is the footage. <laughs> The Reaper was a horse-drawn farm implement invented by Cyrus Hall McCormick in 1831 to cut small grain cut crops. The mechanical reaper replaced the manual cutting of the crop with skies and sickles. It was developed to cut down wheat more quickly and more efficiently. Um, I guess we're back. Uh, at number six, the radio. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splat. Thanks to the radio, we can listen to good music. Radio owes its development to two other inventions, the telegraph and the telephone. Radio technology began as wireless telegraphy. Radio can refer to either the electronic appliance that we listen with, or the content listened to. However, it all started with the discovery of radio waves, electromagnetic waves that have the capacity to transmit music, speeches, pictures, and other data invisibly through the air. It was once said that when pigs could fly, my meat would be kept cold. Number five, the refrigerator. Oh man, my meat is rancid. <laughs> Luckily, now we have this big guy. Carl von Lind was a German engineer whose invention of a continuous process of liquefying gases in large quantities 
formed a basis for the modern technology of refrigeration. Refrigeration is chiefly used to store foodstuffs at low temperatures, thus inhibiting the destructive action of bacteria, yeast, and mold. It was invented by an American in 1876. Hello? Seth? Seth, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Hi, I think we're up to number four. What would that be? I think it's the phone. Okay. Banger! Banger! Bing bong! Banger! Sky bong! If only there was a way for Seth to call me without yelling my name. On June 2nd, 1875, Alexander Graham Bell reasoned by analogy with the mechanical phone autograph that a skin diaphragm would reproduce the sounds like the human ear when connected to a steel or iron reed or hinged armature. On July 1st, 1875, he instructed Thomas Watson to build a receiver consisting of a stretched diaphragm or a drum of gold beater skin with armature of magnetized iron attached to its middle and free to vibrate in front of the pole of an electromagnet in circuit with the line. A second membrane device was built for use as a transmitter. This was the gallows phone. At number six, the machine gun! Draw! The Gatling gun was designed in 1861 during the U.S. Civil War. During its debut in combat, both Union and Confederate soldiers were awestruck by its power and effect, but they were only put into limited service late into the war by the Northern Army. After 1861, new brass cartridges, similar to modern cartridges, replaced the paper cartridge, but Gatling did not switch to them immediately. By 1876, the Gatling gun could fire 1,200 rounds per minute, although 400 was more reasonable. Samuel Morse was an American contributor to the invention of a single-wire telegraph system based on European telegraphs and he was the co-inventor of the Morse code. Witnessing various experiments with Charles Jackson's electromagnet, Morse developed the concept of a single wire telegraph, and the gallery of the Louvre was set aside. In time, the Morse code would become the primary language of telegraphy in the world, and is still the standard for rhythmic transmission of data. And at number one, to cotton gin. Slavery's gonna be over. It's swan its way down. Sweet. No! The modern mechanical cotton gin was invented in 1793 by Eli Whitney, but it was not patented until 1807. A cotton gin is a machine that quickly and easily separates cotton fibers from their seeds, a job that otherwise must be performed painstakingly by hand. The fibers are processed into cotton goods and the seeds may be used to grow more cotton or to produce cottonseed oil. If they are badly damaged, they are disposed of. Thank you for joining us here on Sports Center. Okay. You can do this. <laughs> okay, okay, I can do this. Okay. Uh, just, just let me mentally fix you. Is my mic on? Can you hear me? Is my mic? No, it's not on. Hello. Bigger, there's no nose bleeding on set. He's blowing his nose. <laughs> That'll lead to nose bleeding. You guys are so mean. Bigger, eat your boogers. Oh my gosh. Should no comment. I hate both of you. You guys are. <laughs>